In my growing up in Fayetteville, North Carolina, it's like you could have either, you know, turned to the streets, become pregnant out of high school, or work at your local Walmart. And those were an option for me. I used track and field to get me a free scholarship to college, and I used that to make connections and to, to build on my dream, which was to be one of the fastest females in the world, and that I am. Every season of Survivor is a story. There are our main characters, sidekicks, comic reliefs, and villains. A good season of Survivor tells a compelling story that has you rooting for someone and against someone else. You will want to watch episode after episode to see what happens next until it all finishes with a hopefully satisfying conclusion. Each story that we look at together will go through one character's journey from beginning to end, from the time they're introduced until they inevitably get their torch snuffed or win the game. We are going to look at every character moment and strategic move to determine whether they were a hero or a villain and whether they were a good or bad strategist. And with that, welcome to Once Upon an Island. For reference, we are only observing what the TV show is showing us and what story is being told through the show. No future seasons will be mentioned, as the story and characters here have no idea about what happens in those future seasons. All character moments and strategic moves are interpreted with the mindset of what the story is trying to tell us. And with that... 39 days, 18 people, 1 survivor! Crystal Cox, a 29-year-old Olympic gold medalist from Durham, North Carolina, was a castaway on Survivor's 17th season, Survivor Gabon. And finally, the show is in proper high definition, and these 18 castaways are in Gabon, a first for the show. Though it does make season three Africa a bit confusing since uh, Gabon is a part of Africa as well. But whatever, let's meet our protagonist for this story. Hi, my name is Crystal Cox. You've probably seen me before. Yes, me, Crystal, the 2004 Olympic gold medalist. I am a 2004 Olympic gold medalist in the women's 4x400 meter relay. I'm going to use my lazy speed to win the hell out of this game. Hi, everyone. My name is Crystal, and I am a preschool teacher and a full-time mom even though I am an Olympic gold medalist in track and field. I have no intentions on telling anyone what my real occupation is. Why I think I should be here? Because I have the three Bs, brains, beauty, and blazing speed. Crystal is primed to be the fastest woman here, if not the fastest woman ever on Survivor. No one else's season is as fit as her, in my opinion. Don't let me down, Crystal. Jeff then says, welcome everyone. This season's twist is that we're going to do a redo of season five's twist where the two oldest members draft their own tribes. Those two oldest members being Bob and Jillian. Jillian with her first round selection picks Crystal and Crystal picks Susie. What the heck? Susie is an older lady being picked over guys in their twenties who are in shape. Jeff is baffled. Charlie's baffled and literally says, are we playing stupid survivor? And I am baffled. Jeff then says the first tribe to race up that hill wins reward. And the first person from each tribe to get up there gets individual immunity. They all take off. And this is the foot race that will prove Crystal Cox is a gold medal Olympian. And she's the last one up the hill from both tribes. She even lost to people like Jillian, who is 61 and Bob, who is 57 and Susie, who is 47. Uh, Crystal claims her shoes are 10 pounds, and that is why, but uh, yeah, press X for now. Upon arrival at the Fawn Camp, their fearless leader, Jillian, is obsessed with elephant feces. Hey, you guys, if anybody finds any elephant dung, bring it back. It burns well. Oh, elephant dung. There are elephants around because there was elephant dung that we walked over. So you want to see the elephant dung? Not really. Well, it's very interesting. Look. Yeah. We've been here 20 minutes, and she wants elephant. They poop out the seeds that they don't digest. And we were wondering maybe there might be something edible inside store. Oh, don't you, even think uh, about you that. You first. This is our first day, and I've come to the conclusion that oh, Jillian is annoying. No, you can. You can squeeze the elephant dog well. and drink it. She is so busy at just trying to look busy, and she's not accomplishing crap. Oh boy, I think this might be the hot mess tribe. This is how they're introducing them to us. Sometimes this happens on Survivor with the last times being seasons 10 and 14, where they also pick their own tribes. Um, when are they going to stop doing this twist? That night, there's an elephant roaming around their camp, and maybe it will leave some elephant dung. But even worse is that Randy, the wedding videographer, who hates weddings, by the way, 
busts his head open and has to get stitches. We then go to the immunity challenge, where the first 75% of it is running through an obstacle course, and while Crystal starts in the middle of her tribe, by the end, she's dragging them down in last place. Wow, are we sure she got a gold medal in running and not like weightlifting or something else? They lose immunity and Jeff says, you all are a disaster. It has been three days and the host is already dunking on them super hard. The tribe decides Michelle, she's this negative force of complaining all the time, she's going first. So we go to tribal council where a fight breaks out. G Sizzle resting on his back, digging with one I'm, hand. I'm sorry, yeah, I took a break. If that was the reason we lost, I'm sorry, but I mean. Well, it wasn't the reason we won, because we're sitting here. You can't go 100%, 100% of the time. Um, that's I mean, what a challenge is. We, we that's what a race is. Maybe you don't we stop till the job then. is done. Oh, I'm for sorry, Pete's sake, then why didn't you step up at that point and just get right on it? I didn't stop digging. But you should have verbalized You should have yelled at everybody said, to hey, keep digging. Just thought it's common sense that, seen. you know, when we're in a race that you don't stop until we're done or we win. Holy crap, this tribe is the hot mess tribe. Jeff says maybe a leader would solve your all's problems. No, it wouldn't, Jeff. But anyways, they do select GC, who reluctantly agrees, and they all go to vote. So, last one chosen, first one to leave. Maybe your life lesson in all this is maybe you'll learn to speak your mind. First person voted out of Survivor Gabon, Michelle. Michelle, tribe has spoken. The premiere is actually a double episode, so we move on to the second half. As everyone gets back to camp and we see immediately that GC was the wrong choice to be the leader. He doesn't listen to others. He works loudly in the middle of the night, which wakes everyone up. And after one day, he quits. Yeah, fun. They lose immunity again. And back at camp, the consensus is that Jillian is horrible in challenges. I guess Crystal's physique is covering up her poor performance because if they paid attention, they would see she's she is even worse. Crystal makes a joke about this, though, and everyone laughs and they all go to tribal council where Crystal suspects Dan has an idol. So he dumps his bag to prove he doesn't. A bit extreme, but OK. So they all go to vote and right now, this is a physical game and you just don't have it. I'm sorry. It was great knowing you, but you got to go. Second person voted out of Survivor Gabon. Jillian, Jillian, the tribe has spoken. Oh, no. Crystal is on the hot mess tribe, no doubt, and she may even be a hot mess herself in challenges. We shall see. But sometimes people with blazing fast speed pow, start their races slow before they take off like a rocket. Did you know that Patreon is free to sign up for? Yeah, that's the place where I give updates, post videos early, and have you all pick what I make now has a free option. Link in the description. You can cancel anytime, and there's a 15% discount if you do sign up for one year. Thank you for your support. Episode two sees the entire Fong tribe saying, without Michelle and Jillian, we're gonna win every challenge from here on out. However, this tribe is not only a hot mess in challenges, but at camp as well, as they have been eating, get this, three meals a day on Survivor, and they are low on rice. It is day seven. That rice is meant to last them 39 days. GC even says he threw away half a pot of rice once. What the heck is going on? They then scrounge around their camp looking for food to eat, but they mostly just find gross stuff, which includes grasshoppers. I, I think I'd rather just starve. Crystal and Maddie then win them reward, and I told you Crystal was just heating up. Pacow! And Fong wins immunity as well. Episode three sees the rice supply even lower. It is over halfway gone, and it is now day 10. It's meant to last them 39 days. I know I said that before, but just what the heck? But then we see how Crystal is basically aligned with GC and Kenny strategically, which has Randy and Dan saying, those three have isolated themselves and they've been mean. They've been mean. When, when was this? We haven't seen them be mean at all, but it is all perception. Jeff then throws a plot to us when he tells the tribes, you got to rank yourselves. And then we get third, Randy, fourth, Crystal. What the hell? I'm out there busting my butt, and then they're gonna rank me number four after someone who can't even barely walk and barely do anything, and all he does is sit around and fuss and curse everyone. I was very insulted. Amazing, simply amazing. They then have to draft new tribes, and Crystal's the first woman picked for the new Fong tribe, along with Kenny. They get back to camp, and Kelly of the old Coda tribe trash talks her old tribe. And Crystal says, good, we could flip Kelly to our side. They then go to the immunity challenge where Coda slash Randy basically lays the smack down on them. 
He hates his old Fong tribe. Crystal's completely useless here. Pacow! So they go to tribal council where the plan is to vote off an old Coda member, in this case, Jackie. And Kelly runs her mouth saying, Crystal is so weak in challenges. This is the first person to call her out on it, by the way. And it's funny, Kelly's only been on this tribe for like a day or two. But still, how dare she say that? Crystal is a gold medal Olympian, thank you very much. So they all go to vote and... It was great knowing you, but you gotta go. Fourth person voted out of Survivor the Bone. Jackie. Jackie? Tribe has spoken. Episode four sees Sugar joining their tribe from Exile Island, which they do have this year, but it is largely irrelevant to Crystal, and Sugar basically just replaces Jackie's spot. The next day, they see an elephant, which would make Jillian proud if she were still here, especially if it took a large dump right in the middle of their camp. And at the reward challenge, Crystal is like a screen door during a thunderstorm. Ineffective. Pacow! They lose, and Sugar is sent to exile for the third time in a row. Back at camp, the tribe whips up a meal to help them recover from that loss, and... Eat your rice. Don't tell me to do nothing. Eat your rice. Okay, Crystal. Don't quit, uh... Tell me what I should be doing out here. Eat your rice. Shut your mouth! Mm -hmm. Play with me, it won't be funny for too long. Dang, GC! Dude has an ego problem. He can't take criticism, and when things don't go his way, he pouts and gives up. This happens like all the time. So when Fong reads that they have an immunity challenge coming up, GC disappears. He just goes off and tries to hide. Where did he go? No one knows. Crystal says this boy throws tantrums like a toddler, and she is over it. They then lose immunity again, which this time it's not Crystal's fault. And back at camp, GC says, I want to quit. Crystal says, good, I will not kiss his butt to convince him to stay here. If he wants to quit, then fine. She even says only losers quit, and uh, that's very true. However, since Sugar has been to exile three times, people suspect she might have an idol. And Crystal makes the ballsy move of looking through her bag, and sure enough, Sugar has the idol. So they all go to vote at tribal council, and... You have to go home so you get your wish. Fifth person voted out of Survivor Gabon, GC. GC, tribe has spoken. Episode five sees a plot twist. The reward challenge is all about running around a track. This is perfect. While carrying a snake. I mean, that's that she's not used to that, but they're running around a track. This is all crystal. This is almost one for one with Crystal's Olympian strengths. Except during the challenge, she drops out halfway and they lose. Pacow! This tribe has lost seven of nine challenges so far. Crystal is so over all of the losing. Can you share? We have one. Uh, no. Who wants the strawberries? Losing over and over. Randy to me, he's just, he's a troll. He's a troll under the bridge that's just mean and angry with the world. I don't play like that. Do not disrespect me like that. I love winning challenges. More importantly than winning challenges, I absolutely love watching them lose. Randy hates Crystal, and Crystal hates Randy. But I have to answer the question many of you are wondering, why is Crystal so bad in almost every challenge? She won an Olympic gold medal three years prior and looks to be in great shape. Now, I don't know the answer to that for sure, but I can tell you what I do know, and that is after the season ends, her entire Olympic team was stripped of their gold medals due to them using performance enhancing drugs. But Crystal's claimed on later interviews that she has done with Kenny that she actually got her medal back. I can only find evidence it was stripped. I can't find any evidence it was actually given back to her. So take that for what you will. But anyways, we see Kelly and Ace say Crystal crying today makes her seem so pathetic and weak, which is then made ironic when they lose immunity thanks to Ace. Crystal says Ace doesn't help us in challenges, despite how physical he looks. We might as well vote him off. Talk about the pot calling the kettle black when it comes to challenges. At Tribal Council, Kelly has even more criticisms of Crystal. I never said she was weak, but when somebody cries, it's just like, why are you crying? Clearly something's like, um, you're just not stable. You don't know where my tears come from. Yeah, I'm hurt because we're losing. We're not eating. We're not winning. And if you don't understand that, you won't last too much long in this game yourself. Okay, well, I didn't say that you were weak, so you can take what you want. No, Kelly didn't say you were weak. Kelly said you were unstable. Yeah, that's worse. She didn't explain to us why she was crying. I asked her after that if she was okay. She told me because You don't have to explain. Pride. It's understood. And sometimes you don't have to have stuff written out in black and white. I'm not crying over no daggone Danishes, okay? Really, it gets frustrating, Kelly. It really does. 
We've been down and out from day one. Kelly might be worse than Michelle from episode one, which I didn't show you all of her complaining, but she did it quite a lot. So there is too much whining and complaining. This isn't helping at all, which means they all go to vote and... Get you, go home. Six person voted out of Survivor to vote. Kelly, Kelly, it's Travis Spoken. Episode six starts and Crystal spills their rice supply on the ground by accident. Pacao. I, I just, I don't really have any words. Everyone then makes breakfast with Ace offering to make Crystal some and she says, no, eat without me. She is asked multiple times, hey, do you want us to make you breakfast? And every time she says, no, eat without me. Their tribe then loses reward. What else is new? And back at camp, we see that Crystal and Kenny are super close. Like go to the final three together close. And Kenny says, Ace should go out next. But Fong knows this is their chance to win immunity and turn the tide around. They want to switch up momentum, so they do some yoga to prep. And at the immunity challenge, Jeff says, both tribes are going to tribal no matter what. Oh my gosh. Fong cannot catch a break. They all compete for individual immunity, which sees Crystal losing a mere seconds, Pacao against Charlie, and then Marcus and Sugar get immunity. And at tribal council, she spills the rice. And nobody goes, God, Crystal, what are you doing? No, nobody, but, but your no, face no, just, said just it all. Just simmer down. Your face said it all. My That's face says it all. Yeah. Nobody says a word to her. Because they knew it was an accident. Exactly. I didn't purposely so, go so, into so, the rice box and point. just throw Can the I rice get to my down. Point? Get to your point and then I'll So talk. then we look past it. We move past that issue. Crystal made a mistake. That's common. The whole part of us feeling angry at her, well, I thought was a bit concocted in her own head. Now I'm delusional. I can see it on your face, Ace, okay? Don't look at me like that. And then they started to eat. Oh, Crystal, come on and eat. No, I spilled some of the rice, so I will go without. And that's what I did, and that's but why I did it. nobody asked you to, Crystal. It's not like you saved me any anyways, so you still ate it. I asked you three times. Yeah, so. I mean, if you cared enough, you would have saved me some anyways. Crystal might be going a little cuckoo from all this losing and hunger. They asked her many times, and she said no time and time again. That is on her. So they all go to vote, and... You are one of the snakes, and I gotta get rid of you. Go home. I'll read the votes. First vote. Ace. Ace. Crystal. We're tied. Seventh person voted out of Survivor Gabon. Ace. Ace. The tribe has spoken. Good luck, guys. Episode 7 has people hyped. They're like, finally, the merge is coming. Both tribes then meet up and enjoy a massive feast together. The season idol know hidden in plain sight. It is read out loud. Randy finds the idol, offers it to everyone. No one wants it because it would put a public target on their back. So Marcus, the leader of the Code tribe, chucks it in the ocean and says, these idiots let me throw away an idol. They're so dumb. Marcus is so cocky, but he has good reason for that. He knows his group won't vote him out no matter what, and they're basically just going to hand him a final three spot. So everyone goes to read the merge note and... It turns out they're not merged. They're just swapping tribes again. Oh my gosh. Crystal, Kenny, and Susie do go to the new Coda tribe with Marcus and Bob. So they have numbers. Funny. I bet Marcus feels like an idiot now without that idol. But then, plot twist, we learn that Marcus's best friend is Crystal's cousin. Marcus is from Atlanta, Georgia, which I guess isn't too far from North Carolina. But still, what are the odds? This does cause Marcus to immediately trust Crystal and says, hey, she's a cool girl. So then she makes a promise to him. I'm telling you, this is my word. Yeah. In the unlikely event we have to go to trouble, I'm not writing your name down. Yeah. Marcus is playing the nice guy, but he's a schemer. I'm playing nice girl, liar, and schemer. Me telling Marcus that I won't write his name down, that's me playing the game. Because I also told Ace I would not write his name down, and Ace got blindsided. The game is outwit, outlast. You can't outwit Crystal Cox, baby. Wow. Get him, Crystal. They then go to the immunity challenge where Crystal's amped up and excited. She's on Coda. This is her chance to win immunity. She drops out after four seconds. Pacow! This is not a joke. She literally drops out after four seconds. Pacow! Even the 57-year-old Bob makes it to the end. I mean, maybe Crystal is cursed. I mean, Kenny's with her. Maybe he's cursed too. I don't know. Marcus then jokes how bad Crystal is in challenges and the game plan is on. Marcus, the cocky leader of CODA, has got to go. Crystal talks with Susie and says, anything Marcus has told you is a lie. Come with me and Kenny. At Tribal Council, Jeff asks how this camp is different than Fong's, which has Crystal saying Fong was like the projects in comparison. 
So they all go to vote and you are not Dakota God. Go home. Goodbye. I'll read the votes. Kenny. Kenny. Two votes, Kenny. Marcus. Marcus. We're tied. Two votes, Marcus. Two votes, Kenny. Ninth person voted out of Survivor Gabon and the first member of our jury. Marcus. Marcus. Tribe has spoken. I bet Marcus wish he had that idol he chucked. Oh, well. The next day at the reward challenge, the old CODA members are shocked with Corinne and Charlie in particular saying Marcus did not deserve to leave. And Kenny's like, what? Why? Why not? Everyone deserve. Who does not deserve to leave? Why does he not deserve to leave? And they're like, I don't know. He just didn't deserve to leave. Those two were ready to hand final three to him, showing how he was the right move in the last tribal for Crystal and Kenny. They then lose reward. That's like what? 11 out of 13 challenges so far that Crystal's lost this season. Wow. Pacow. So much for her blazing fast speed. But after Fong enjoys said reward, Jeff says, OK, now you're all merged. Episode 8 sees Susie win individual immunity, and you already know that Crystal wasn't even close to winning this one. So at their new merge camp, it seems like old Coda wants to target Crystal and vote her off first. Uh-oh. As it turns out, Randy is spearheading this movement because he hates Crystal, and by the way, she hates him. The alliance of Crystal, Penny, Maddie, Sugar, and Susie plan on voting off Charlie since he is the most likable Coda member. So when they all go to tribal, Crystal says Randy, why do you have an issue with me? what I do to Randy, really? All right. The first nine days of this game, mm -hmm. you made Fong a living hell. You and your boy GC. Okay. You guys were running. The, hey, I let you talk. You going to let me talk or what? Speak on. All right. You and your posse ran the tribe like it was a gang. When you guys had power, you guys were arrogant. You were hard to get along with. You were causing the division in our tribe and were the reason that we lost all those times. All right. Okay. You, you you want more? You feel like you have to say some more? We ain't got nothing but time. Randy is completely unhinged. I know the show is highly edited and a lot was cut, but Crystal was never mean or anything like that to Randy. He's just like an angry curmudgeon. So they all go to vote and... Word on the street is that you're a really mean person, but that's besides the point. You took out my Marcus and that makes me really mad. You're a bully and I don't want to play this game. You are a big threat and you're hurting my alliance. I'm sorry, but you gotta go. First vote. Who cast this vote? Uh, CC, Crystal Cox. Crystal. 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 Charlie. 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 Tenth person voted out of Survivor Gabon and the second member of our jury. Charlie. Charlie, tribe has spoken. Episode 9 sees Randy going, crap. Crystal and Kenny hold all the power in this game now. He even says Charlie was the right vote off for them. But now it is time for the Survivor Auction, which sees Crystal and Kenny both not spend a single dime, which is weird. And instead we see Randy and Sugar beefing harder than Crystal and Randy. And that's because Sugar's immature and Crystal's not. That's just my opinion. Maddie then says, hey guys, maybe we should target Bob next, not Randy. Bob's actually good in challenges and he's likable. People are like, nah, you're just being paranoid. Bob's an old man and we hate Randy. He needs to go. Randy catches wind this is happening, so Bob gives him an idol and Randy starts hating on everyone to trick them into voting for him tonight so he can play said idol. This is an idiot. Why can't she yawn and not make a noise? <sighs> There's not a normal person among them except you and you even, even hoard yourself out. Oh my God, don't do this, dude. Randy just sealed his fate, you know? Guess how many of those cookies I ate? Anybody I'm buddy. tired of this story, though. Yeah. Thank you. You're right. <laughs> I'm done. Then okay. shut the f up. I can talk when I want. Randy got to go. The hell with her. He's 49 years old, acting like a two year old. What's he want to do? Like, fight or something? Dude is wildly out of line. Kenny then wins individual immunity. Crystal wasn't even close, but I bet you already knew that. And at Tribal Council, the moment of truth and revenge takes place when... This vote is not strategic. It's strictly personal. I'm holding this up for a minute before I start, so it seems like I'm explaining why I'm voting Randy. I'm voting you, Susie, because payback's a You are a disgusting, old, hot-headed, chauvinistic, You 
have made my life hell from day one. Forget you, go home, goodbye. If anybody has the hidden immunity idol and you want to play it, now would be the time to do so. Thank you. This is not a hidden immunity idol. I think that Randy would fall for it. Sugar wants to play the joke on Randy. My life expectancy is a little bit better off, allowing her to have the satisfaction of me giving Randy the, the idol. I get nothing to lose. Randy is an ass, and I loathe him with every inch of my being. First vote, Randy. Susie. Randy. Susie. That's three votes, Susie. Randy. Randy. 11th person voted out of Survivor Gabon and the third member of our jury. Randy. Randy, chop spoken. Wow, 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 wow. That was amazing. Bob's idol was a fake the whole time and everyone was so salty when voting for each other. I loved every second of it. Back at camp, Sugar and Corinne both openly fight again because they're both being immature. And the next day is a welcome relief from the stress as they all get to see videos from their loved ones. Crystal, of course, cries and unfortunately, Bob wins your award and is the only one who gets to see his loved one. But plot twist, Survivor didn't fly everyone's family members to Gabon for nothing. So when Bob brings his wife back to camp, everyone else gets to see their loved ones too. After everyone spends an hour or two with their loved ones, Maddie says again, we have to go for Bob. He wins everything and he's likable. But that plan is put to an end real fast as Bob wins immunity. And once again, Crystal is not even close. Pacow! So their new plan is to vote off Corinne. But then another plot twist takes place when Bob shows Crystal the idol he claims Marcus threw in the ocean. What? That was like four episodes ago. He's had the idol this whole time. She believes him. But as it turns out, it is not the idol Marcus threw in the ocean. It's another fake he made. Kenny says, huh, Bob could have an idol but you should still vote for Corinne just in case. So at Tribal Council, they all go to vote and... You only started talking to me within the last 48 hours. My alliance is thicker than you could ever think. Sorry, it was great knowing you, but you gotta go home. First vote, Maddie. Corinne, one vote Maddie, one vote Corinne. Maddie, two votes Maddie. Maddie, Corinne, two votes Corinne. Corinne, that's three votes, Corinne. Twelfth person voted out of Survivor Gabon and the fourth member of our jury. Corinne. Corinne, the tribe has spoken. One of those votes for Maddie was from Kenny, and this is huge, by the way. Maddie is so mad. Why is his own alliance turning on him when all of Coda isn't even gone yet? Crystal says Maddie is gone next anyways, so whatever, who cares what he thinks? Bob then wins the reward challenge, and I must point out that Crystal did not make one basket. Bacow! And uh, she wasn't even close. When the challenge is done, she goes to dunk her ball, and she misses. Bacow! Again, I don't have words. I just have noises. Bob then takes her and Kenny on reward and hopes they will vote with him next time. And she says, sure, let's vote off Maddie next. Back at camp. Maddie is still mad that Kenny voted for him, and you can look, you can look me in the eye and say you don't trust it. I don't trust you. You're lying. What? You've changed, and it's, it's not for the good. But if you me and Kenny over, karma is a bitch. Why you get mad at me? I didn't do anything. Because me and Kenny have been there for you from day one. What do you mean? What do you want? What do you want? I don't want anything. I don't want anything from you. I don't want anything from you. I have no idea what's happening right now. Crystal is going off on Maddie for no reason, and I've already seen Kenny go off on Maddie, and Maddie doesn't deserve to be yelled at. Kenny acts like he's this weak little meager guy, and he spends all these lies, and Crystal is just a big bully. Why would they kick you when you're down? It feels like they're just going off on you when, when you know you're going, but you're not going. Why don't I just... Uh... You're not gonna go. If Crystal just reassured him, she would be golden. But now Sugar tells Maddie, screw Crystal and Kenny for bullying you. Let's vote them off first. She wants to get Crystal first and then Kenny. Wow, things have turned around fast and not for the better. So the immunity challenge is do or die. And wait a second, the immunity challenge is do or die for Crystal Cox, the gold medal Olympian who has blazing fast speed. We all know what this means. Yep, Bob wins and Crystal isn't even close. Pacow! Back at camp, 
Kenny has this harebrained idea that he will convince Bob to give him his immunity necklace so he can vote him off. I said it was a harebrained idea. Crystal tells Maddie and Sugar this is the plan which backfires immediately as Sugar tells Bob everything. So at Tribal Council, they all go to vote and... Maddie, take this cursed thing away. The rules of Survivor state that if somebody plays a hidden immunity idol, then any votes cast against that person will not count. The person with the next highest number of votes will be voted out. This is indeed a hidden immunity idol. First vote, Maddie does not count. Maddie does not count. Crystal, one vote for Crystal. Crystal, 13th person voted out in the fifth member of our jury. Crystal, Crystal, tribe has spoken. So let's break this down. How is Crystal as a character? She is a gold medal Olympian who showed time and time again she couldn't do anything of value in challenges, not even running challenges. However, Crystal is actually a really fun character. Someone who I would love to see play again, despite how unlikely that is to happen now. She was charismatic, fun, and constantly brought entertainment. I love how she was just unabashedly herself. She didn't hide because she was on TV or anything like that. She was just, she was Crystal, and I loved it. Out of 21 character moments shown on the show, 14 were heroic and 7 were villainous, making Crystal a hero character on Survivor Gabon. Now, how is Crystal as a strategist? Despite her absolutely atrocious challenge performance, pakao, Crystal was solid. Most of her dumb moves came after the Kenny vote on Maddie, but had that never happened, I have no doubt Crystal had an amazing shot to make Final 3. Her and Kenny were basically running the post-merge game until they done screwed up. And while I cannot sit here and say she would have won over the jury, because I don't know, I think she had a decent shot. But knowing Crystal, she likely would have missed that shot too, and not even be close. Pacow! Out of 29 strategic moments shown on the show, 15 were smart and 14 were dumb, making Crystal a smart strategist on Survivor Gabon. Thanks for watching, and doubly thanks for liking and subscribing. I'll see you all next time.